How do you decide whether it's nucleoside or nucleotide? A nucleoside is a nucleobase with a side of sugar. If you add on phosphate group or groups, you get a nucleotide with a T, think energy, because those phosphate groups are going to provide the energy that's needed in order to piece together these DNA or RNA letters. When we refer to nucleotides, we talk about them as nucleoside monophosphate if they have one phosphate group, a nucleoside diphosphate if they have two, or a nucleoside triphosphate if they have three. And I'm emphasizing the side because you have to remember that when you talk about nucleotides in terms of their parts, you have to refer to them as nucleoside something phosphates because if you were to say nucleotide triphosphate or something like that, that would be redundant and repetitive and redundant and repetitive because the nucleotide encompasses having phosphates. But if you want to talk about how many phosphates are on it, then you're talking about how many phosphates are on the nucleoside. So it's a nucleoside monophosphate if it has one phosphate group, a nucleoside diphosphate if it has two, and a nucleoside triphosphate if it has three. And if we talk about the DNA versions of those, it would be a deoxy nucleoside monophosphate, diphosphate, or triphosphate. Because in DNA, we have deoxyribose as our sugar. We're missing this, uh, this 2 prime OH. Um, whereas in ribose, you have that OH. Going back to thinking about nucleotides having a T, like you can think of energy, takes us to thinking about the nucleotide that you probably think the most about, ATP or adenosine triphosphate, which our cells use as a kind of global source of energy. Because as I mentioned, those phosphate groups have a lot of energy. Much more on why in another post, but basically you have these negatively charged groups clamped, like tightly held together, and those negative charges are repelling one another, and so it's kind of like having to clamp together a tight spring. And then if you, if you break those bonds, you release a phosphate group or phosphate groups, well now you're basically getting the energy back, like if you were to release the spring and something were to fly off the end of it. But in this case, we can use that energy to do cool things, um, like link together DNA letters. And so this polymerase is able to do this, but it's able to do this with any of our nucleotides. And so basically, although we our enzymes and the other molecules in our body tend to basically be specialized for using ATP, a lot of them, um, really you could have it so that any of these nucleotides could be used as a source of energy. Our molecules just aren't really shaped to use them that way. But when you're doing polymerization, when you're piecing them together, then that energy is going to be used as a source for all of them. And so when we're doing something like PCR, where we're trying to piece together DNA letters in a tube to copy DNA, well, we're going to need to add DNTPs. And now I've started using this notation of DNTPs. Here the N stands for any nucleobase. So an NTP is just a nucleoside triphosphate, and the DT. DNTP is a deoxynucleoside triphosphate. And so when we're doing PCR, we need deoxynucleotide triphosphates. And so we actually add a mixture of all the DNT um, DNTP mixture. So it'll have some of um, deoxyadenosine, deoxyguanosine, deoxycytidine, and deoxythymidine. And so if you see DNTPs, that's just what that's referring to is that the N could be any of those nucleotides. Leobases. So in the case of PCR, we needed the nucleotides because we needed those phosphate groups to provide the energy. But there are also times that you will see nucleosides being used for various things. And this includes the use of nucleoside analogs or kind of mimics to treat um, various viruses, such as the use of AZT to treat HIV. So basically, Nucleotides can't get into cells very easily because of those phosphate groups. But nucleosides can get in more easily, and then once inside the cells, the cells can then add those phosphate groups on. So we can sneak nuclei, things that look like nucleosides into cells, and it'll trick the machinery that add, to add phosphate groups to it, and then it might be able to trick the a polymerase into actually using it. And if there's something weird about those nucleosides, um, 
that makes it so that they can't be used, um, that they, you can't add things onto them, such as with AZT. Um, there's no 3 prime OH, so it's a chain terminator. Nothing can get added on once this is added on. Um, and in the case of others, it might like introduce mutations and things like this. And so typically our polymerases, our cells polymerases, um, we have good proofreading and things like this, so they're not gonna get tricked by these mimics. But viral polymerases often can. And so this is a strategy that's used to treat various viruses. So in the case of HIV, which is a retrovirus, it has this RNA genome that it copies into DNA in this reverse transcription step, and then it integrates that into our DNA. So it sticks himself, our, itself into our DNA so that it could hang around for a long time. This reverse transcription step on um, this reverse transcriptase, this type of polymerase, it can get tricked by this AZT, and when it adds it, then it can't, um, then it gets terminate, terminates the transcription. And so AZT is an example of a nucleoside um, analog that's used as a drug. And there are others as well. And again, these are added as nucleosides, and then the phosphate groups get added because this is going to make it easier for them to get into our cells. So remember that a nucleoside is a nucleobase, so adenine, guanine, cytosine, thymine, or uracil, thymine in DNA, uracil in RNA, plus a side of sugar, so ribose in RNA and deoxyribose in DNA. So you add nucleobase plus sugar, you get a nucleoside. And then if you add phosphate group or groups, you get a nucleotide. So this is it has a T, like energy, because those phosphate groups are going to provide energy. And we can then refer to these as something MP, something DP, or something TP, depending on whether they have one, two, or three phosphate groups. The more phosphate groups you have, the more energy you have. Um, and this makes it so that these molecules are going to allow um, other molecules to get sources of energy, such as giving polymerase the energy it needs in order to piece together DNA molecules. So we often talk about um, the ATP as a source of energy, but really the same holds true for any of the other TPs. Um, we just, our cells aren't, um, our, the molecules and like the enzymes, the reaction helpers in our cells aren't designed to use them. They don't have the right shape to bind those other nucleotides. GTP, however, is actually used a lot in translation. Um, and so there are various places you'll see the others used as sources of energy. And they're all used as sources of energy when it comes to piecing them together by polymerases in order to make copies of DNA or RNA.